The Fugitive, a 1963 TV series, tells the gripping story of Dr. Richard Kimball, a man on the run after being wrongly convicted of his wife's murder. As he chases the real culprit, a one-armed man, he must also avoid capture by the relentless Lieutenant Gerard. This show is a classic because it combines suspense with a quest for justice, keeping viewers on the edge of their seats. The character of Dr. Kimball, with his intelligence and moral strength, stands out as a favorite. He's a hero fighting against the odds, which is something that never gets old. Now, we've got some funny, shocking, and sad facts lined up about this series that will surprise you, so keep watching. And we're curious, what's your most memorable moment or experience with The Fugitive? Share your stories and memories in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Your connection to this series makes it all the more special. So, let's dive in and explore the legacy of The Fugitive together. He's not an eight-year-old child. He's capable of a lot more, Buck. Ask your wife. The Fugitive is a television series that started in 1963. It tells the story of Richard Kimball, a doctor who was wrongly convicted of his wife's murder. After escaping from custody, Kimball goes on the run to find the real killer, a one-armed man he saw leaving the scene of the crime. While on the run, he tries to stay ahead of the law and Lieutenant Philip Gerard, who is obsessed with capturing him. The show is set across various locations in the United States as Kimball travels from town to town, helping people while trying to clear his name. The series was notable for its final episode, where Kimball confronts the one-armed man, which was one of the most watched episodes in television history at that time. And we all have problems. I'll not issue any statement about- Two actors known for their roles in the classic series also shared the screen in the film Lonely Are the Brave. Meanwhile, Shirley Knight demonstrated her dedication to her craft by returning to the stage shortly after becoming a mother. Co-star Jacqueline Scott spoke warmly of David Jansen, highlighting his complex personality that contributed to his compelling performance. His ability to blend humor and depth made him a memorable part of the series. We had the hotel staked out last night. I felt sure that if our friend were in town, that he'd have dropped by to see you. Edward Binns, known for his solid character roles, had the distinction of appearing in four films nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, with Patton securing the win. In an amusing anecdote, Barry Morse, another actor from the same era, was once surprised by a note while dining in London, humorously hinting at the presence of the show's protagonist in the kitchen. Adding to the cultural footprint, the series was humorously reimagined in a popular magazine, showcasing its reach and influence on entertainment. In the heart of London, the stirring sounds that accompanied the chase scenes and cliffhangers were brought to life. Fifty musicians, a blend of Ted Heath's band and the London Philharmonic Orchestra, gathered at CTS Studios in Bayswater. Under the baton of Harry Rabinowitz and the attentive ear of sound engineer Eric Tomlinson, they created the music that would define the suspenseful atmosphere of all 120 episodes. This library music was a one-time recording used throughout the series, not customized for individual scenes. Dabney Coleman, who later became widely recognized for his role as Burton Fallen in The Guardian, was among the cast that brought the characters to life. Behind the scenes, there were whispers of an alternate ending that never made it to the screen. Barry Morse, in his book The Fugitive Recaptured, dispels the myth of an ending where the protagonist reveals himself as the true culprit with a prosthetic arm. This rumor likely stemmed from a private joke between Morse and lead actor David Jansen, who had considered staging a gag for public appearances. Jansen, known for his humor, also quipped about the character's motive, suggesting a lighter side to the otherwise intense drama. Morse shared another playful idea, a dream sequence where everything was just a nightmare. Even in interviews, Jansen toyed with the idea of a final twist, leaving it ambiguous whether he was serious or simply adding to the show's lore. But where do we stash it then? I got an idea. You two get near the car, follow me. Now, what's that? Robert Duvall's career includes roles in several Oscar nominated films, with two wins for the Godfather series. His acting earned him nominations and a win for Tender Mercies. The show's creation faced skepticism, as the premise of a man unjustly accused was seen as controversial. However, Leonard H. Goldenson of ABC recognized its potential, leading to its production. David Jansen's portrayal of Richard Kimball brought him recognition, distinguishing his career from previous roles in television. 
check on Tyler? Sure. Who is he? What do we know? Eileen Heckhart, known for her diverse roles, portrayed Eleanor Roosevelt three times, showcasing her in two television productions and a stage performance. David Jansen, beyond his acting career, shared a turkey pot pie recipe in a cookbook by Diana Millay, his co-star from a previous film. The character Richard Kimball's escape was initially set in Wisconsin, but due to the state's lack of capital punishment, the setting was shifted to Indiana to maintain the story's credibility. He's come to tell us something, something about what happened. Well, bring him in. In a unique connection between life and art, Kevin McEnroe penned a novel that mirrors the life of his grandmother, Joanna Moore. Titled Our Town, the book features a character named Dorothy sharing Moore's actual first name and was released in 2015. Transitioning to the show's production, it's notable that the series embraced color in its final season, distinguishing it from the previous black and white episodes. Behind the scenes, David Jansen, known for his leading role, shared an interesting link with Clint Eastwood. Both were students in Universal's acting classes during the 1950s, and later, Eastwood had a brief relationship with Jansen's widow, Danny Crane, showcasing the intertwined personal and professional lives of Hollywood's actors. Sorry. In a nod to the future, Leo P. Kelly's prison satellite drew inspiration from the chase dynamics of the show, portraying Officer Barry Mark's relentless pursuit of a scappy Kirkland in a space setting. The series itself was known for its revolving door of talent, with actors like Lois Nettleton and Kurt Russell making multiple appearances. It set a precedent in television storytelling by concluding with a final episode that tied up all loose ends, a first for TV dramas at the time. One day this might happen. In the early 1960s, a television show captured the attention of viewers with its gripping portrayal of a man on the run. Jacqueline Scott stepped into the limelight as Donna Taft, the supportive sister of the central character, Dr. Richard Kimball. Her performance left a lasting impression on audiences. Meanwhile, David Jansen, known for his rugged on-screen persona, was remembered by co-star Deborah Raffin as a man whose real-life demeanor was far from intimidating. Instead, he was a sensitive and considerate individual, a stark contrast to his television image. Richard Anderson, another key player in the series, was recognized for his role in the Bionic franchise as Oscar Goldman. Off-screen, Anderson faced the challenge of a receding hairline, which was visible in his roles outside the well-known series revealing a different aspect of the actor not seen by fans of his Oscar Goldman character. In a notable recognition of his work, Telly Savalas received the key to New York City in 1990 after his portrayal in the Marcus Nelson murders, which introduced the character of Lieutenant Theo Kojak. This role would later become central to the success of the spin-off series Kojak. Meanwhile, the network behind the show, ABC, was initially hesitant to bring the series to a close with a definitive ending. Their concern was that concluding the story might negatively affect future syndication profits. David Jansen, the star of the show, had a personal nickname for the series, referring to it simply as The Fuge. This term reflected his connection to the show, which had become a significant part of his acting career. Well, I don't know. He said he had something important to take care of. What's wrong, Lieutenant Jacobs? A star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame commemorates David Jansen's work situated near the Chinese theater and his childhood ice cream shop unveiled on his mother's birthday. Edward Asner, notable for his role as Lou Grant, uniquely portrayed this character across four different television series. Meanwhile, David Jansen received letters from prisoners across the United States empathizing with his character, claiming they too were wrongfully accused. I'll get the keys. Right. Georgie! Yeah. In the resting grounds of Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills, William Conrad lies among peers from the golden age of television detective series. Not far from him are the graves of Telly and George Savalas of Kojak, along with key figures from Perry Mason and Dragnet. Eileen Heckart, whose talent was once praised by Marlene Dietrich for its potential to dominate European theater, faced the harsh realities of Hollywood's restrictive casting. 
Robert Duvall, known for his diverse roles, once portrayed the grandson of Lawrence Olivier in The Betsy, despite a modest real-life age difference of 23 years. These individuals' careers reflect a time when television was carving out new narratives and characters, leaving a lasting impression on the industry and audiences alike. Spot? Yes, sir, it is. He turned in front of me here and he went down this road. Uh, thank you very much. Right. Dabney Coleman, an actor with a notable presence, joined Phi Delta Theta fraternity at the University of Texas, aligning with the Texas Beta chapter. Lois Nettleton, another talented performer, received a Tony Award nomination in 1976 for her role in They Knew What They Wanted, showcasing her skill on Broadway. Tali Savalas, known for his distinctive appearance, unintentionally impressed a casting director during a 1959 audition for Armstrong Circle Theater, leading to a successful career in television and film. In crafting a narrative about a classic series, it's essential to address the origins and behind-the-scenes elements that shaped its creation. Despite apparent parallels to a real-life murder case, the creator's vision was rooted in the desire to portray a contemporary wanderer, akin to the lone cowboys of Western lore. This vision brought to life a character traversing the nation driven by a quest for justice. Meanwhile, the series also became a space where reality and fiction blurred, as evidenced by the cast's interactions with Bill Raish. His physical reality was often mistaken for cinematic illusion, reflecting the era's limited understanding of disabilities. Additionally, the series intersected with historical lineage through Robert Duvall, whose ancestral connections to American history added a layer of depth to his roles both on and off the screen. These facets collectively contributed to the show's enduring appeal and its place in television history. <laughs> What's the matter with that? Can't you the haunting melody that accompanied the series often mirrored the somber tones of When I Fall in Love, setting a reflective mood for the viewers. Richard Anderson, inspired by the legendary Gary Cooper, embarked on his acting journey with a screen test that echoed Cooper's 1938 film. Dr. Richard Kimball's life was marked by relentless adversity, his journey fraught with physical and emotional trials. From being blinded and repeatedly injured to facing betrayal, his resilience was tested to the extreme as he navigated a world of danger and deceit. No wonder you want to get out. If you're not here, you won't... In the realm of classic television, certain actors stand out for their work in film adaptations and unique roles across different series. Lawrence Naismith, known for his role in the series, also graced the silver screen in two adaptations of John Wyndham's works The Chilling Village of the Damned and the romantic science fiction film Quest for Love. Robert Duvall, another notable actor, has an impressive portfolio with eight of his films being preserved by the National Film Registry for their significance, including To Kill a Mockingbird and The Godfather series. Richard Anderson made a rare mark by portraying Oscar Goldman in The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman at the same time, a feat shared by only a handful of actors like Leo G. Carroll and David Hasselhoff. These actors' contributions to both the series and cinema highlight their significant roles in shaping the television and film industries of their time. Letter objecting to his phone bill. Shirley Knight demonstrated her dedication to her craft by returning to the stage only four months after welcoming her daughter, Kaitlyn Hopkins, to star in The Three Sisters on Broadway. In a unique twist, the series featured a French train in its opening sequence, despite the storyline taking place in the United States. Knight's talent was recognized with a nomination for the Joseph Jefferson Award for Guest Artist in 1977, following her performance in The Landscape of the Body at Chicago's Academy Festival Theater. Um, this is Mrs. Crandall, and this is Miss... Um, I don't know your name. David Jansen's portrayal of a man on the run captivated audiences week after week, earning him high praise from peers and critics alike. Patrick Mackney hailed him as the finest television actor, a sentiment echoed by Neil Saban who noted Jansen's remarkable presence in nearly every scene of the show. Meanwhile, Bruce Dern, known for his role in the Cowboys, faced intense reactions for his on-screen actions, highlighting the powerful impact of television drama on viewers. 
These testimonies underscore the exceptional performances that define the series and its enduring appeal. Not on him, on you. Charlie? Eileen Heckhart, an actress with a notable career in theater and film, was honored with a special Tony Award in 2000. Her talent had been recognized earlier with three Tony nominations, and she won an Oscar for her role in Butterflies Are Free. When casting for the central character of Richard Kimball, producers considered actors Robert Lansing, James Franciscus, and Anthony Franciosa. Bruce Dern, known for his roles in westerns, first appeared in the genre in 1963, and over five decades later, he portrayed a character with a similar fate in The Hateful Eight. You've always given me good enough reasons with anything that came along like an alley cat. In a groundbreaking move for television, Richard Anderson became the first actor to portray the same character across two different shows airing on separate networks. This occurred when the Bionic Woman transitioned to NBC for its 1977-78 season. Meanwhile, Roy Huggins, in creating a memorable antagonist, opted for a one-armed man over his initial idea of a red-haired villain aiming for a unique identifier that would stand out. Lois Nettleton, who played a role in the series, had a notable background as Miss Chicago 1948 and was a semi-finalist in the Miss America pageant that same year, bringing a touch of real-life acclaim to the fictional world of the show. In the world of collectible movie memorabilia, few items command as much fascination as the Falcon statuettes from the 1941 film The Maltese Falcon. Among these, the lead Falcon gifted to William Conrad by Jack L. Warner stands out. After Conrad's passing, this piece fetched 398 500 auction, setting a record for the highest price paid for a movie prop at the time. It also inspired a gold replica valued at over $8 million, complete with ruby eyes and a diamond-encrusted platinum chain. This same series made television history with its finale, drawing more viewers than any other episode until it was surpassed by Dallas. Additionally, the Dern family Bruce and his daughter Laura have both shared the screen with Samuel L. Jackson in various films, showcasing their acting range across different genres and eras. Causes, fighting for this and that. But unfortunately, it's usually just a bunch of talk. In the landscape of television, dedication to one's craft can often lead to remarkable personal investments. This was the case for Robert Duvall, who, believing strongly in the project The Apostle, invested five million of his own funds to bring the film to fruition after studios turned it down. The passion for acting runs in families, as evidenced by Lawrence Naismith, whose grandson Woody Naismith is making his mark in Los Angeles. The series also showcased a blend of musical talents utilizing compositions by Dominic Frontier from other notable shows for certain episodes despite not being credited. Additionally, music from renowned composers Bernard Herrmann and Jerry Goldsmith, along with tracks from Capitol's library, enriched the show's auditory experience. If that baby dies, it's murder. In the, In the early hours before sunrise, tragedy struck as David Jansen, known for his lead role in a popular series, suffered a fatal heart attack. His wife, Danny, swiftly contacted emergency services at 4019 AM. Despite their prompt arrival and efforts, Jansen was pronounced deceased upon reaching the hospital. An examination later revealed the toll of heavy smoking on his health, with significant blockages in his heart arteries. Meanwhile, Geraldine Brooks, who also starred in the series, was born into a family well acquainted with the performing arts, her father being James Eastrook, the head of a theatrical supply company. The narrative of the series took the protagonist, Dr. Richard Kimball, across the United States, with his journey spanning all states except Minnesota, New England, and the Deep South, and even reaching into Canada and Mexico. In the landscape of television, few achievements stand out like the rare honor of winning Emmy Awards in both comedy and drama for the same role. Edward Asner and Yuso Aduba have this unique distinction. Asner's portrayal of Lou Grant earned him accolades in the comedic setting of the Mary Tyler Moore show and later in the dramatic series Lou Grant. Aduba's portrayal of Crazy Eyes in Orange is the new black saw a similar trajectory with the show's shift from comedy to drama categories following Emmy rule changes. Joanna Moore's journey with Alfred Hitchcock was less than ideal. 
Under contract, she made appearances on his show, but their professional relationship soured, leading to the contract's dissolution. The experience, as detailed in John Russell Taylor's biography of Hitchcock, was fraught with unsuccessful attempts by Hitchcock to restyle Moore and her apparent disinterest in studio relations. Telly Savalas, known for his distinctive voice and bald head, also had a notable connection to Alcatraz, portraying inmates in two different productions. His roles as Fido Gomez in Birdman of Alcatraz and Kretzer in Alcatraz, the whole shocking story showcased his range in depicting characters on the wrong side of the law. Human condition, isn't it? Unless one decides to do something. Edward Asner set a precedent in television history with his Emmy wins across diverse categories, showcasing his adaptability as an actor. Robert Duvall, known for his powerful performances, was once in the running to portray the chilling Dr. Hannibal Lecter, a role that ultimately went to Anthony Hopkins. Bruce Stern's collaborations with Jack Nicholson in five different films highlight his consistent presence in the industry and his ability to share the screen with other notable actors. You hear anything? In the late 1960s, Shirley Knight was expecting her first child while completing her role in The Rain People. The rights to produce remakes of the classic chase drama shifted hands when Keith Barish acquired them from Taft Broadcasting and later passed them to Warner Brothers. This led to new versions being made without the involvement of the original production company, QM Productions. The vehicle driven by the protagonist, Richard Kimball, in the initial episode in flashbacks was a 1960 Mercury Park Lane, which also featured in the series extended flashback sequences. The ownership of the original series rights has changed over time now resting with CBS Studios. The only one without a job to do. We don't need an intercom operator this time. Got the suit on, huh? Shirley Knight, celebrated for her role in Kennedy's Children, earned a Tony Award for her performance. Her talent was recognized again with a nomination for her work in The Young Man from Atlanta. Val Avery honed his acting skills in the Armenian Youth Theater and later in drama school, leading to a successful career in television and film, particularly in westerns and crime dramas. Edward Asner, known for his role in The Mary Tyler Moore Show, passed away at the age of 91, shortly after the passing of his co-star Gavin McLeod. Their departures marked the end of an era for the beloved show. Lieutenant Gerard, I'm here for my prisoner. Your prisoner, Lieutenant? Surely not a guest of the... While David Jansen was on location for the Green Berets, the final chapter of his previous show aired, leading to a special interview on Joey Bishop's program where he shared his thoughts on the conclusion. Meanwhile, Shirley Knight's portrayal of Natalie Ravena in The Rain People went on to influence the creation of Dollars in Silence Eye. Notably, the show's core narrative shares striking parallels with Hunt the Man Down, a film about a man on the run after a wrongful murder conviction, both characters being pursued relentlessly, and both stories featuring a one-armed man as a significant figure. Yo, uh, you, uh, where are... In a classic case of art imitating life, the residence depicted as Dr. Richard Kimball's home shares, its facade with the iconic suburban house featured in Leave it to Beaver. This crossover of sets adds a layer of familiarity for viewers, bridging the gap between two very different television worlds. Meanwhile, Eileen Heckart, a distinguished actress, demonstrated her dedication to her craft by returning to the stage a mere four months after welcoming her son, Philip, into the world. She graced the Broadway scene with her performance in The Bad Seat, showcasing her resilience and commitment. In a similar vein, Robert Duvall, a celebrated actor and the second of three siblings, brought a family affair to the silver screen. Both his elder brother, William, and younger brother, John, lent their vocal talents to his 1983 film, Angelo, My Love, making it a unique family collaboration within the industry. I'm a hunter, Sheriff. I've been hunting all my life. After the initial episode, Barry Morse and David Jansen shared a moment of uncertainty about the show's future, wondering if it would last beyond a few weeks. Edward Asner, known for his distinctive voice, lent his talents to animated series, bringing to life characters in the Spider-Man universe. Telly Savalas, before his rise to fame, had a significant personal moment at the Garden City Theater Center, where he encountered Marilyn Gardner, marking the beginning of a significant relationship.
In a dramatic opening sequence, viewers see a train derailment with Kim and Defer prominently displayed. This footage is not originally crafted for the series, but borrowed from the film The Young in Heart, featuring Janet Gaynor and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. under the production of David O. Selznick and distributed by United Artists. The popularity of the series reached international levels, leading a German magazine to propose a unique contest where readers could engage in a game of pursuit with David Jansen on the streets of West Berlin. Edward Asner, known for his diverse roles, notably donned the Santa Claus suit on multiple occasions, including in films and television shows such as Elf, The Ellen Show, Olive, The Other Reindeer, The Story of Santa Claus, A Story About Christmas, Santa Stole Our Dog, A Merry Dog on Christmas, and episodes of Regular Show and Highway to Heaven. So maybe in a month, not now. We don't want to be a burden to you. Oh, come on, don't start that up again. In a moment of inspiration, Roy Huggins captured the birth of a groundbreaking television concept with a single photograph, a memory he would keep close throughout his career. This creative spark led to a series that would become a staple of its time. Meanwhile, Telly Savalas, known for his distinctive voice and bald head, formed a lasting friendship with Angie Dickinson, starting on the set of a 1971 film and continuing until his death in 1994. Their bond was a testament to the enduring connections formed in Hollywood. In another corner of the industry, Robert Duvall's career intersected with numerous Oscar-winning performances, showcasing his ability to share the screen with some of the most celebrated actors of their generations. His filmography is a reflection of his skill in bringing out the best in his fellow actors, contributing to cinema's most memorable moments. Why should he? Are you kidding after what he did? What did he do? A man with a medical background from Cornell Medical School, who completed his internship in New York and furthered his studies at Guy's Hospital in London, finds himself constantly on the move. He has assumed various common names, often choosing Jim coupled with surnames like Lincoln, Fowler, Russell, Wallace, Owen, McGuire, and Corbin. Meanwhile, Eileen Hickart stands out as an actress who has achieved recognition in both film and television, securing an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress and an Emmy for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series, joining the ranks of Cloris Leachman and Melissa Leo with similar accolades. Up on the head. Yes, abnormal pressure on the brain, internal bleeding in the cranial yeah, cavity. Cut. Right here. In the early 80s, a film titled The Glory Road was set to feature Dabney Coleman among its stars. Despite beginning production, financial issues led to an abrupt halt, and the project was never completed. In another instance, actor Robert Stack had the opportunity to play the lead role in a popular series, but chose not to take it. Meanwhile, Lois Nettleton made history by being the first to call into Gene Shepard's radio show, leading to her regular participation and the birth of the call in radio format as we know it. Change. Someday Don might feel it has to. In an early episode, a young Ron Howard appeared as a guest star who later carved out a successful career as a director, guiding actors like Robert Duvall and Kurt Russell in films such as The Paper and Backdraft. The show's impact was evident in Ireland, where it was so well received that the airing of its final episodes saw the streets of towns across the country empty as viewers were glued to their screens. Robert Duvall, one of the show's notable actors, honed his craft under Sanford Meissner at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in New York and showcased his talent in productions like A View from the Bridge and Tomorrow at St. Mark's Playhouse. Morning. Good morning. Is uh, Dr. McGallop... In the early 1960s, a television show captured the attention of viewers with its gripping tale of a man on the run. Among the actors, Val Avery made a mark with his role as a bartender, a part he played in various films and shows before and after his appearance in this series. David Jansen, who took on the lead role of Dr. Richard Kimball, became a household name, leaving a lasting impression on audiences with his portrayal of the determined and falsely accused protagonist. Lois Nettleton, an actress with roots in Chicago and ties to California, found her final resting place in New York, connecting her personal journey to the city's history. Together, these actors contributed to a narrative that still resonates with fans decades later. A little bored with me. You see then, I'll be the only one left between you and all that money. 